Hey hey, it's Binu again and we are back with part 2 of getting started with Krita. So last week I showed you guys all the basics that you need to know when you get started with Krita. So this week I'm going to show you how you can use what you learned from that and make a simple and cute animation like this while I go through some more cool features on Krita. So this animation was based on Waddles the Pig from Gravity Falls, one of my favorite shows created by Alex Hirsch. Naturally, I started by doing research on all of Waddles' features from various clips of Gravity Falls. And I really wanted to create that fat and squishy look of him. Your face is so fat! And I wanted to take it a little step further and exaggerate his features by making him extra squishy and bouncy looking. So I'm going to start out with a new layer and draw out rough shapes with a pencil brush that resembles Waddles. In this animation, I want him to slowly fall over and stay like that with his tongue out. So I'm thinking of his rough shape as sort of a squishy ball when I'm drawing out these frames. And as soon as he comes into contact with the ground, I'm squashing the body outwards to emphasize on the impact. This will give the idea that he's very squishy. And then I'm using a separate layer to draw out his legs in sync with the rest of his body. And I'm giving his legs a little bit of a wiggle as he lands as a bit of follow through. And then I'm going back to my base shape and adding a little bit of a smearing effect to the top of his head so that his animation feels a bit more fluid. Quick tip, you can select a range of frames by clicking on a bunch of frames while holding control and then you can move them freely anywhere on the timeline. And yes, you can select and move frames that are in different layers together. Now I'm drawing his ears on a separate layer and I'm making them sway to the front and then fall back with the body here to create anticipation and a nice follow through. So in the frame of impact, I'm stretching his ears out just like his cheeks to add some emphasis to his fall and make them wiggle back and forth a little so that they look loose compared to the rest of his body. And then I'm going into the facial features. So here as he falls down, I'm making him close his eyes so that it seems like he's preparing himself for the fall. As soon as he lands, I'm adding a tongue sticking out as well to show more of his derpiness. Just as before, stretching his tongue out a bit at the point of impact for exaggeration and making it wiggle a bit to show the loose nature of the tongue. Now for the last step of the sketching part, I'm going over the lines to clean them up a bit and adding in more details. Next comes inking. I really enjoy doing this part because inking feels very therapeutic to me. So I'm creating a new layer for the inking and I'm selecting this brush called Ink Circle 10 because I think it closely resembles the line work that you get on the characters of Gravity Falls. And do not forget to turn on anti-aliasing here before anything so that your lines will look clean and sharp without any artifacts. Do turn down the opacity of the sketch layers from here so that you get a clear view of your inks. And then we are going to go into tool options and put brush smoothing to weighted and the distance to around 55 in this case so we have some good control over our lines. And then I'm going to trace over my rough animation as cleanly as I can. And now I need to bring in a reference image to pick out the colors of orders. I'm going to do that by simply dragging and dropping an image into my canvas. Once this drop down appears, select insert as reference image. And then the image will appear on your canvas as a separate image without getting placed on any of your active layers. And now we can straight away pick out any color from the image by left clicking with control on the area of the color. Oh and when you're done with your reference image, click on the pin icon over here, click on your image and simply press the delete key to remove it. Now we'll create a new layer underneath the inking layer for us to give Waddles his colors. And we're going to select the paint bucket tool and go into tool options again and select sample all layers. And we'll go back to our layers panel and turn off all the unwanted sketch layers underneath by clicking on the eye symbols on the left. After that, all we got to do is go to your color layer and click on where you want with the color you pick and continue this for all of your frames until you're done. And this is what it looks like completely colored. After I was done with Waddles, I really wanted to put him in a proper background as well because this looks boring with just him. So I decided to put him in a background inspired by the forests in Gravity Falls. As usual, I went back and collected references to get inspiration out of. So I created a layer below everything else for the background sketch and I started by tilting my canvas a bit using the quick access wheel. And I drew out elements that would typically be present in a Gravity Falls background using a pencil brush like old logs, sticks, mushrooms and a whole bunch of trees in the background. So the line work in the backgrounds have a different style from the characters in Gravity Falls. So I used this brush called Ink Tilt 20 that gave me the line quality that I want. 
you can see here that I'm not getting the same uniform strokes I was getting in the previous inking brush I used and this is exactly what I needed. So just as usual I continued to slowly ink everything on a separate layer. Now that I'm ready to color, I'm importing a reference image with a color palette that I made using colors from Gravity Falls backgrounds. And I'm filling out different parts of the background on different layers depending on the way I'm coloring them. Now let's say we want to color something inside a layer and don't want any brush strokes to appear outside the base color. We can do that by selecting the layer that you want, right click on it and then go over to group and then quick clipping group. Now this is going to create a separate clipping mask layer for you to color in and you can freely color in this mask layer without worrying about anything bleeding out of the layer. If you need to select a specific color you can head over to the advanced color selector over here and pick whatever color you like. Ok so let's say we need a darker version of the color we've already used to create shadows. We can do that by creating a new layer, set the blending mode to multiply from over here and then set your opacity to around 25 to 30% and use black as your color and paint over your base. So following all of these methods and trying out different brushes, I completed the rest of my background like this. And once I was done with the background, I created a shadow layer underneath bottles to give more depth to the scene. And there you go, your cute portal scene, completely colored and animated inside of Critter. Mm. Everything is different now. So I hope you learned something useful from this video and we cannot wait to see what you guys come up with using Critter. So do let us know what you thought about today's video and feel free to ask any questions you have from us. Hold up a minute, we got a small announcement. Also, this is me, Binu, the dude behind the videos, and we are really happy to announce a brand new tier on Patreon. Every month, we'll be uploading a video made by a member of our team where we talk about the things that inspire us, like movies, TV shows, and books basically, everything that helps us create the art and animation you see on our channel. And it would mean the world to us if you guys could give us some support over there so that we can continue to push out more fun content for y'all. It would really help us around this channel and to expand to more softwares like we did with Krita this week. So yeah, thank you so much for the continuous love and support as always. I'll catch you guys on the next video.